Hi, everybody. Uh, if you can hear in the background, that sound is someone trying to zoom in to uh, with me uh, while I'm trying to talk with you uh, this morning. So hopefully they will uh, hang on and let me call them back in a little bit. I apologize for the little dinging in the background, but hopefully uh, it will stop in just a few seconds and we'll be able to uh, have a conversation together. Sort of a nice sound in the background. It's not totally unpleasant. It's just persistent and eventually it will quit. Uh, yesterday was my top's anniversary. It was uh, many years ago that I first joined Topps, and uh, that was on July 31st, uh, so long ago that it just doesn't seem possible. And I reflect now on how young I was then. Uh, when I walked through the door, wasn't sure exactly what I was going to find. I knew where I was in my head at the time, and I knew some changes needed to be made. Uh, but I was really not sure about this new group that had started in our community. And I uh, was needing help. I had gone through the usual uh, list of things, I tried many that worked for a while, uh, resulted in weight gain, tried some that didn't work at all, uh, tried some that were actually dangerous to my health, uh, and had temporary success but no long-lasting permanent benefit. And so I was at the point where I really needed to find something I could stick with uh, for the long run. Did I ever think the long run, run would week to today? No. I did not imagine it ever would uh, last as long as it did and enrich my life in so many, many ways and give me so many friends uh, that uh, have, are now very long-term friends uh, through our association on Common Cause, which is trying to live our healthiest lives at whatever point we find ourselves. Uh, at that time, I joined specifically uh, to lose weight in order to carry a child to term and was successful in that. Uh, but I came to realize as I went through the process of learning about obesity that it's not just a short-term thing. Uh, it's going to be a, an issue I deal with for the rest of my life. Uh, and I needed to find ways that would help me do that. And with that in mind yesterday, as I was just taking some time to scroll through uh, some of the posts, I came across one that Judy Wilson from our group had thrown up uh, that was one of my very favorite poems. It was one by Robert Frost. It was called The, the Road Not Taken. And as I was reading it, I was reflecting on all the choices that we have in our lives and how different my life could have been if I had chosen a different path. Um, I don't know if I'd gone down another path how my life would have evolved. I just know that I chose this path. And as the poem indicates, uh, Ways lead to ways, lead to ways, and very often the choices we make along the way sort of inform the next choices that we will be taking. Um, and who I am now is, is in many ways a result of those choices that I have made throughout my life. Um, and I know many of you have been enjoying the lessons learned from childhood that I have been doing for uh, off and on for the last few months, uh, sort of interspersing them with what's on my not mind. And today's sort of a combination of the two things rolled into one. And one of the things that 
I just want to set in your mind is adjectives create images. You know, they're descriptors and they paint the picture. And the picture I've been contemplating today is who am I? Who are you? If I ask you that question right now and you had a piece of paper, what is the first thing you would write down on the paper? Uh, the most important thing. Who are you? Well, a lot of people, uh, me included from time to time, when I'm asked that question, would probably say something like, uh, I'm Barb Katie. And I might give you my age. I might not. I might say, you know, I'm a mom. Uh, I'm a wife, a mother, anything. Just descriptors. Those are words we would commonly use as uh, we are asked the question, who are you? But that doesn't really tell you anything about that person. Uh, there are a lot of people named Barbara. Uh, there are even a bunch of people named Barbara Katie. Uh, if you ever doubt that your name is unique, just ask uh for a search on Facebook and you'll see how many others share your name. Uh, there are a lot of people that serve the different roles that I've served throughout my life. Uh, uh, there are a lot of people that have had similar jobs to the jobs I've had during my life. Do they really tell a person what is unique about you? Probably not. So where do we look to find out more about this person, the true person that is inside the package? Well, uh, do you look at what the person values, uh, their emotions, their beliefs, their behaviors, you know, things um, like, I am kind, I am happy, I am industrious, I am persevering. Uh, I am compassionate. This gives a better picture to me of who someone is than just the initial elements that we all go to. Uh, I know when the boys were in school, they would say, who's the mother of the Katie boys? And I would just say, to myself, well, do I acknowledge this or do I not? Uh, but the mother of the Katie boys was a lot of different things, just like you. You know, we are not just one thing. And the adjectives paint the image of the person we really are. Uh, are you happy? Uh, are you sad all the time? Uh, are you a positive thinker? Or do you always look uh, at the glasses being have empty. Those kinds of words uh, and, this, uh, and the stories that are associated with those words paint a picture of the way your life is. And this is particularly important when we look at the effort required to make the changes we need to make and the choices we need to make uh, as we go through our lives in whatever capacity. And Trying to be our healthiest selves is just one of our goals. It's not the only one. But your voice, when you're telling the story of who you are, really helps to inform that choice. What do you tell yourself? Are you filling your vocabulary inside your head with positive images or are you beating yourself up? I hope you're not beating yourself up because that is really going to make it even more difficult to achieve what you want to achieve in your life. Um, when I was little growing up, there was a little chant that uh, kids would sometimes say on the playground when they were getting bullied or teased by other kids. And the little chant you've probably heard, it goes, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can never hurt me. And that's not true. Words have the power to hurt. Uh, words can help 
or words can hurt your self-esteem. Uh, and these can even be words meant in kindness, uh, not maliciously or viciously or with a mean spirit. But the words we hear and internalize that become our self-talk are the words that do the most damage um, or provide the most help and support. And what words are inside your head? When you write a list of your values, your emotions, your beliefs, and your behaviors, how many of the words that you write on the list are uh, positive words is incredibly important. The more positive things you can find to say about yourself, it gives you more self-esteem and more self-confidence to try to do the difficult changes that you wish to do to live your best life. Use your words for your own good, just as you would when you choose your words carefully when trying to support and empathize with someone else. Treat yourself as you would someone that has come to you and said, Hey, you're my friend. I need some help from you. Can you give me a sense of purpose and a sense of value uh, to move through this difficult challenge that I'm facing right now? The support role that TOPS plays is so essential as we move through the journey. Uh, and one of the best ways to support is to make sure that you share with others positive words to help them shape their new image within their own head of being their best selves. And things, uh, words stick, words have power. Uh, it's unbelievably true how a casual word uh, innocently stated flies through the air into someone's head and sticks there. You may have only said it one time, but I guarantee you when it reached the ears of the target recipient, they play it back like a tape 10,000 times. It gets repeated inside their own head unless they have the self-confidence and the self-esteem to say, I'm going to disregard that. This, it is not congruent with my image of myself and I need to move past it. Or they need to say, that may be true and I'll examine it and see if, it, if I need to make that change rather than just let it land there as a truth untested that you are going to allow to, to <clears throat> shape your future steps in your journey. Uh, in that poem by Robert Frost, one of the things that I loved was at the end of it, he said, I chose the road less traveled. But when he began going down the road, he also discovered that that road had been well worn, but it simply had not been traveled on recently. And to me that says, sometimes we need to revisit things we believed were true and valid and see if they still have a place in our lives or if we have in fact moved past them and are actually blazing a brand new trail that will be a better path for us to take given where we are right now, uh, who we are right now, and the mission that we're about right now. Just like choices, there are changes that are inevitable in life that will shape the direction of the journey. And we all need to take time from time to time to look at the words we use to paint the images of our present 
and hopefully of our future too. Um, on my anniversary day, I just want to say thanks to Judy Wilson for posting that poem uh, that was one I remember from my childhood. Uh, words have great power, and there's great power in the road not taken. <coughs> and I think that because of the reread of that poem, why it's not a children's story, uh, I'm going to move forward in a more positive, focused direction because I've reflected on, over the weekend, who I am and what I really want. Uh, I don't want to coast. I want to live fully in the moment, every day, happily, healthily, and with good friends surrounding me every step of the way. And I want to thank you for being part of my journey for all these years. I couldn't have done it without you. And I'm so very grateful that all of you are in each other's lives as well as mine, helping as we go along the way. Thank you so very much for being a part of my journey. I will talk to you later. Bye for now.